Welcome back to Genetics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In some of the previous videos, we talked about the sex chromosomes in humans and other mammals. Those are the X and Y chromosomes. And hopefully by now you understand that in a normal female, their sex chromosome genotype would be XX, and in a male, they would be XY. And we also mentioned that in females, who normally have two X chromosomes, one of those chromosomes is inactivated, meaning that the female only requires one active X chromosome. Let's say that's this over here. And so to designate that chromosome, we say X subscript A, which means active. The other one is inactivated. That one I'm showing over here on the right side of this nucleus. And so we designate that X sub I. The I stands for inactive. And the inactive X chromosome is often termed a bar body. Okay? So we're going to be using that term in this video as well. In this video, I want to actually talk about abnormal conditions where we have a faulty number of X chromosomes. And there's actually three primary disorders. The one over here, which I haven't actually shown the names, this one is going to be Klinefelter syndrome. In the middle, we have Turner syndrome. And on the far right, something called Triple X syndrome. Okay. And these are disorders, or aneuploidies, where we have an abnormal number of X chromosomes. So first we're going to talk about those. We're going to link them back to bar bodies. But before we do that, I actually want to discuss how this occurs. So when you have a disorder where there's an abnormal number of X chromosomes, what it results from is a non-disjunction event during oogenesis, which is the female gametogenesis. Now this process of non-disjunction can occur during meiosis one or meiosis two. So what is supposed to happen during a normal meiotic division? Well, we have a parent cell here, and its exact identity depends on whether we're in meiosis one or meiosis two. But in any case, this cell is going to divide, and it's going to produce two daughter cells. Now, normally what will happen is you will get one viable cell that will continue growing. The other one's going to be a polar body. And if you need more detail on that, go back and watch my a brief explanation of oogenesis. But essentially, these two chromosomes, let's say they're both X chromosomes, they're supposed to get equally apportioned between the two daughter cells, meaning that the viable cell that's going to continue growing gets one of them, and the polar body actually, even though it will die, the polar body gets the other X chromosome. Okay? But what happens if we have a non-disjunction event? Well, we can get two cases. And we're going to assume that the polar bodies are not shown here. These are just two different cases of the viable cell. And so these are both going to be secondary oocytes. And that's actually the exact cell that gets fertilized by the sperm cell. And if you need more detail on that, go back and watch my video over oogenesis. So in one case, let's suppose we have a secondary oocyte that has two X chromosomes. If you have a secondary oocyte that gets two X chromosomes, that means that the polar body didn't actually get the other X chromosome. Both of them, for some reason, ended up in the secondary oocyte. We're going to look at another case also where, let's say, the secondary oocyte actually didn't get any of them, which would imply that the polar body actually got both of the X chromosomes. Okay? And this zero here, this O, implies that there's no X chromosome there. Okay, so understand, neither of these are polar bodies. Okay? These are just two separate cases of non-disjunction. Okay? And we're going to assume here that the sperm cells are normal. So let's actually do a cross here, a Punnett square. So let's first look at cases where we have our secondary oocyte that has two X chromosomes. That's, of course, abnormal. Let's first fertilize it with a sperm cell that carries an X chromosome. Remember, the sperm cell, all it does is carry DNA. That's it. It doesn't provide really anything else. So if we combine the X chromosome from a sperm cell and these two X's from the secondary oocyte, we end up with three X chromosomes. That is an aneuploidy. So that's a trisomy, actually, of the X chromosome. And we actually term that triple X syndrome. There's actually no other fancy term for this. It's just triple X syndrome. So that's what happens. You have to have a secondary oocyte that has two X's. Okay. Now what happens if you cross this secondary oocyte with two X's with a sperm cell carrying a Y? Well, you get XXY. Now, even though there are two X's in this genotype, XXY, 
this person would be male. And the reason is because they have a Y chromosome. Pretty much if you have a Y chromosome, you're male. You could have four X chromosomes. You could have XXXXY, you would still be male. And this condition where you have XXY genotype is called Klinefelter syndrome. And both Klinefelter syndrome and triple X syndrome only result from when you have a secondary oocyte that has two X chromosomes, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Also notice that the triple X, because it does not have a Y chromosome, this individual would be female, okay? Now let's look at a case where the secondary oocyte actually had the opposite case, the opposite non-disjunction, where it didn't receive any X chromosomes. The X chromosomes all went to the polar body for some reason. Well, let's cross this secondary oocyte with an X chromosome from the sperm cell. The genotype would just be X. Again, this O here is kind of like a placeholder. It just means that there's no other sex chromosome. So it's just X. This is what's called Turner syndrome. Now, again, there is no Y chromosome here, so uh, this individual would be female, but this is Turner syndrome. Now what happens if you cross this secondary oocyte that we are just talking about with a Y chromosome from a sperm cell? Well, the genotype would just be Y, okay? Again, the zero is a placeholder. This organism does not survive, okay? Not even close to being born, it just doesn't grow. And the reason it's non-viable is because in order to survive, you have to have at least one X chromosome. Understand that the Y chromosome, while it's important for being male, the Y chromosome is not necessary for an organism to be alive. That's, of course, why we have females walking around the Earth, right? They don't have Y chromosomes, because you clearly don't need a Y chromosome to live. But if you don't have an X chromosome, any, you don't survive. You're non-viable. So you will never see a living organism with this. Okay, so non-viable. Therefore, really, the only three conditions we can look at are Turner syndrome, triple X syndrome, and Klinefelter syndrome. So again, here's another look at what we see here. This first one over here is our Klinefelter syndrome, XXY. They're, of course, male because they have a Y chromosome. Now, in the case of Klinefelter syndrome, uh, we only see one active X chromosome. Okay? Remember the lion hypothesis that we talked about from one of the previous videos. This is a hypothesis that says that all but one X chromosome in any sex chromosome genotype is inactivated, meaning that you will always only have one active X chromosome. Every other X chromosome in, in excess is inactive. And so that inactive X chromosome becomes a bar body. In fact, we stated that the number of bar bodies is equivalent to the number of X chromosomes minus one. So if we look at the Klinefelter genotype, we would expect to have one active X chromosome, X sub A, but we also have another inactive X chromosome over here as a bar body, X sub I. Also notice that Y chromosome is still active. Okay? And even though uh, we only have one active X chromosome, the other one's inactivated, there's still going to be some abnormalities associated with Klinefelter syndrome and also some of these others as well. Okay? Um, these three conditions, there are some slight differences um, from normal appearance, um, and uh, there can be cases of learning deficits, but overall there's really nothing that's going to keep these people from living normal lives. The only other thing that we might consider that's common for all three of these is they have reduced fertility, but even so they still actually can be fertile, just a little bit less fertile. All right, the second one is Turner syndrome. This is a case where we only have one X chromosome. So therefore, we would not expect to see any bar bodies. We can't inactivate the only X chromosome that this organism has, so there's just an active X chromosome, X sub A. So that's Turner syndrome. And of course, this organism would be female. Now this last one over here, this is triple X syndrome. Now, because there's three X chromosomes, we only need one active X, that's this one, X sub A. So the other two X chromosomes are actually inactivated, okay? so X sub I. So we actually, in triple X syndrome, would actually see two bar bodies. Okay? And if we go here, we can see that there are some uh, slight abnormalities in the appearance. In some cases, there may not be. Uh, but like I said, uh, these people can go on to live normal, fulfilling lives. There may, in some cases, be some learning or cognitive deficits. Um, I've read that in some cases, uh, in particular with uh, Turner syndrome, you can have 
uh, IQ scores that are maybe on the order of 10 to 20 points lower than average, but again, nothing to make them completely ineducable. The only other thing I want to mention about these non-disjunction events that can occur is they are not heritable. Okay? As far as anyone knows, they're just random accidents that happen during meiosis. There's no way that you can genetically predict this based on probability or anything like that. It's pretty much, as far as anyone knows, a random process. Okay. Now, hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the processes that actually lead to the development of these three syndromes. Hopefully uh, you understand the genotypes of these, and also we can see the bar bodies that are present in each case. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.